This video is about kind of measures of central tendency. Uh, and these are famous ones. You have your mean, median, mode, range. Uh, we're going to learn about outliers and standard deviation. And I have good news and bad news. You know, mean is pretty straightforward. It makes sense. You get it. It's sort of an average. Median, pretty mellow. Mode is very easy. You're going to get that. Range, easy. An outlier is a weird concept, but you'll get the hang of it. And standard deviation is useful, but it is mathematically frustrating to find. But it is total, it's a clear process. So we'll break it down and we'll take them one at a time. The mean is totally normal everyday life math. And really what the mean is, is all it is, is the average. And you know, us math nerds, we like to come up with fancy terms like, okay, so find the mean of the following values, but actually it's just average. That's really all it is. And so if you had a data set, like for example, two, four, you know, I don't know, eight, six, four, zero, and they said, find the mean of these values or the average, find the mean of these values. All you do is you add them up. So it'd be two plus four plus eight plus six plus four plus zero over and this is what's weird it's over how many values there are so one two three four five six so this would be divided by six and that's it that's how you find the mean i don't care if there's a million values you'd have to add them all up and divide by a million there could be two values you add them up and divide by two all you do is you add the values and divide by how many there are so in this case looks like yeah, 6, 14, 20, 20. So it looks like it's 24 over 6. So the mean of all these numbers would be 4. Again, the average of those numbers would be 4. And so I think finding the mean is very straightforward. There's one trick question that teachers kind of like to ask you. And um, it's common for they'll say, you know, uh, if a student gets the following test scores, what would the last test score have to be to get the average of 90 or whatever? But here's here's kind of a smaller number case scenario. So they might say something like this. Let's say you have the values 2, 3, 5, 2, and the last value you don't know, and they tell you that the mean is equal to 4. So they might say, what would the last value be in this data set in order uh, for these to have a mean of 4? And all you do, it's pretty straightforward, is you do 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 2 plus I have no idea, hence the x divided by, now be careful, this is weird. A lot of students will divide by how many there are and they'll say one, two, three, four. So you divide by four. Incorrect, there's five values including the one we don't know about. So this would be, this would be over five. And remember, they already told us that the mean, they already gave us the mean, so we know what that value is. Uh, the mean value is equal to four. Right. And now doing the math, like, okay, this kind of is like one big term on top. How do I get rid of this five here? How do I get this five over to here? Remember, you're, if it's divided by five, we're going to multiply both sides by five. Right? So we look like this. So this is gone now. And then you have all of this equals 20. So you have looks to me like five, 10, uh, 12 plus X equals 20. Solving for X, let's minus 12, minus 12. So it looks like this value here would be eight. So to find the missing term, totally easy, call it x, and then make sure you divide all the sum of all of these by how many there are, including the variable. That's about all there is for mean. It's pretty straightforward. It, as far as the median is concerned, basically you'll have a data set like this, two, three, seven, nine, you know, 11, 14, let's say 15, right? And the question is, they'll say, what's the median? And all you do for the median is, you line them up from least to greatest. Now this could be annoying. The data set I just gave you happens to be in order. Two, three, seven, nine, 11, 14, 15. What if they give them to us scrambled, like two, 15, seven, three, 11, you know, et cetera. The same data set, but out of order. Your first step annoyingly is to put them in order. So whatever data set you have, you cannot find the median until you put them in order from least to greatest. So that's step one. And yes, it's kind of annoying, but it is what it is. Okay, so now what the median is, is you essentially chip away at the edges until you get to the middle guy. And there might be one middle guy, and that's the median. But if there's two middle guys, you have to average them. So let's see. You go knock him down. Well, actually, let me let me get fancy here. I'll use a red pen. So let's knock him down and him down. Moving on. Him and him gone. 
him and him gone, and you see that the median, the guy in the middle left, I went three this way, three down, the guy in the middle is nine, so we have the median of this data set, median would be equal to nine. Now what if I had the same data set, two, three, seven, nine, 11, 14, 15, and then 19, one on the end. Now what happens is I'll have two in the middle, right? So watch what happens when I chip down, we'll say him gone, him gone, chipping away, I get to here, chipping away, I get to here. And now there is no middle term, I have two. So what do I do in that case? What's the median in this case if I have two in the middle? Then simply all you do, it's pretty mellow, you average them or you find the mean of them like we did in the last section. What's nine plus 11? 20 over two, that is 10. So the median for this case would be 10. And you can really see, honestly, what's halfway between nine and 11, it's 10. I don't know if I would do it in my head every time. You might add them and divide by two, but either way, uh, that's how you find the median for either of these these two cases. And the reason median is a pretty powerful tool, so to speak, is it eliminates extreme values. Like, you know, you might have home prices um, and something like this. You know, the home prices in your neighborhood might be like, you know, 120K, you know, 125,000, you know, 130,000, um, you know, 132,000. And then Warren Buffett moves in and then the last one is worth a billion, right? If you average these values, the, the, the average, the mean would come out like closer to a billion. You know what I mean? Some huge, ridiculous number. And what's powerful about the median is, is what it does is the first step of whittling essentially eliminates radical values. So a median's kind of smart because it chops like, you know, this might be a little kind of a funky house that's worth nothing. And this is a billionaire's house. They get eliminated. And so what you do find is sort of a middle ground. And, and that's why some people like median for some values. And I know home prices is one where they always, they never say, What's the mean home price in your neighborhood? They always say, what's the median home price? Because that eliminates extreme values. So that's the deal with median. So everybody loves mode because it's by far the easiest to find. I mean, one of the easiest, right? So let's say I had a data set like two, six, you know, five, seven, seven, nine, two, four, two, ten, two. Okay, and I deliberately put it out of order to mess with you. Again, if I was doing median, I'd have to put this in order, which would be annoying. Mode, all you're looking for is the value that there's the mode stuff. Ha, huh. you get that little witty little one I just did? Yeah, I remember it. Mode is the one that you have the mode st of because it's the, the number that there is the most of. And I'm looking up, oh, maybe it's seven. I have two of those. Wait a minute, it's not seven. So here's seven, I have two. Wait a minute, I have one, two, three four twos. Okay, let's see. Anybody else compete? No. The number that there is the mode stub, the value that there's the mode stub, the mode in this case would simply be two. And that's literally all you do. You look at the data set and whichever value repeats the modes huh, is the mode. So people love that because it's so easy to find. Now the range is also relatively popular. You know, I mean, I don't know if much math is popular, but it's also um, kind of one value in a data set that's really easy to find. I'm going to do these in order like 4, 9, 9, 11, 17, 24, 36, right? Random data set. The range, all you do for the range is you take the largest value, right, minus the smallest value. It's just that easy. And I did these in order to save us some time. So let's take the largest value, which is 36 minus the smallest value, which is four, and your range for the data set would be 32. And that's kind of valuable, you know, valuable because it does tell you, you know, how big of a span you have. So finding range is, is relatively simple. And, and um, range and median mode, these kind of involve, all um, involve what's called the outlier, which is sort of the next topic. And what an outlier is, is it's, it's a value, you know, you kind of hear this word just in normal English, like, you know, gosh, that baseball player is an outlier. Or in the case of those home prices, the billion dollar home would be the outlier. It's a value that is ridiculously big or small and, and totally skews the data set. So you might have like, you know, um, how many home runs uh, your some baseball players hit. You have like this guy hit two, you know, another guy hit one, this one hit three, another guy hit four, and then this guy hit 72. 
Okay, obviously this value is just ridiculous. It's an outlier. It's something an extreme value and it's a compliment in a lot of cases. They'll say like, you know, your performance, man, you are a real outlier. You're just out there, but you could also have an outlier that's too small of a value. And so really it's usually frowned upon in data that it, it skews the data set. And again, this would be eliminated by median because it would get chopped right away, but an outlier would ruin the mean of a data set. So an outlier is a value that it's kind of an extreme, you know, out of control number that's too high or too low. And there's actually a formula to calculate whether or not a value is an outlier. For example, is eight an outlier? Uh, that's a that's a debate. And we're not going to have that discussion in this lesson, but um, later on in math, you'll find out how to accurately calculate whether or not it's an outlier. But for now, you get the point that it's a huge value that it's out of control or too small, one that does not match uh, the data set at all. And sort of the villain of these measures of central tendency, you know, or the villain of these stat analysis is standard deviation only because it requires some math, but actually it's kind of a cool concept. And what standard deviation is, and nobody will say this, so I'm just going to, this is like, you know, I'm just going to come out with it. It means give or take. So they'll say, hey, all of my friends are about five feet, give or take six inches. So really this just means give or take in a very like formal sense, you know? So you can say the following hundred people, these are their salaries, give or take $10,000. You know, maybe if you, some make higher, some make lower, give or take, right? So if the standard deviation is really high, then you know your data set is all over the place. If the standard deviation is low, then it's not. So for example, we all got the same math score, give or take one point. Gosh, that's close. We all got the same score in 95 and 96, whatever, right? Um, or what if they had a high standard deviation? Hey, we all got the same math score, give or take 30 points out of 100. That's a huge standard deviation. So that's not close at all, right? So really, this is a formal calculation of give or take. And then here's how you find it. And you might start to hate me as I explain this. Let's say you have the following data set. You have two three, seven, eight, and 10. And we can already tell that the standard deviation is pretty significant because two to 10 is pretty far off. I don't know. You don't know, you can't decide give or take unless the first thing you do is you find the mean. So step one is you find the mean of these values. And it looks like you have two plus five, 12, 20. It looks to me like you have 30, adding them all up, divided by one, two, three, four, five which means the mean would be six. So step one of finding the standard de deviation is the mean. Step two is the one where people start to like glare at me. What you do is, are you ready for this? You take the square root, all right, of the following. In every case, you take the mean minus the first value squared plus the mean minus the second value squared, see where I'm getting these, first value, second value, third value, plus the mean minus the third value squared, continued, plus the mean minus the fourth value squared, plus the mean minus the fifth value squared. And here, so this is gonna be six minus two is four squared, this is gonna be 16 plus, so you're going to through nine, right? And here you don't care that this, you don't really care that this value here comes out negative, do you? Because negative one squared is still going to be plus a positive one, right? And so over here you have plus, that looks like two squared is four. And then over here you have four squared is 16. And this is still rooted. And you add all these values up, 30, it looks like, I don't know, roughly root 46. And I'm not going to calculate that. It comes out to some decimal but you get the point. You get a value that is a standard deviation for the following data set. I don't think it's that hard to do. People hate it. It's not that tough. Find the mean of the values, mean minus first guy squared, mean minus second guy squared, blah, blah, so on, root all of it, and that is your standard deviation. And again, if somebody asks you like, hey man, why do we even have to figure out the standard deviation, man? Uh, you know, Maybe you don't if you're like just hanging out with your buddies, but basically it is a formal measure of give or take. And so it's kind of helpful uh, in data sets. And that's the, the way to solve most of these or find most of these measures of central tendency. And they're pretty cool. You know, they're pretty valuable. And that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video.